Hi guys, my name is Sybil and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So recently I finished up my GRE exam and I started studying for this test on July 1st of this year and I got it done and over with by August 28th. So I studied for a total of two months. Last week, I got my results back and I scored a total of 324 on my GRE exam. I got a 162 on my verbal, 162 as well on my quant, and I got a 4.5 on my analytical writing. So today, I really wanted to sit down and share with you guys how exactly I studied for this exam, including my study schedule, as well as my study materials, because I know that the GRE is not an easy exam to study for, and I just wanna be here to provide you guys with as much help and support as I can give to make this study process a little bit easier for you guys. And since time is of the essence, without further ado, let's get straight into it. So starting off, we're going to be talking about a study schedule. Now step one to creating your personal study schedule is understanding your target score and ideal test date. I knew that I wanted to score a 160 plus on both verbal and quant um, within two months. So this was the goal that I set for myself. Before you start studying for the exam, I think it's always a good idea to do your research first and understand the target score that you need to get in order to, let's say, enroll in the master's program that you are applying to. After I confirmed my target score and ideal test date, I actually didn't schedule my test on the ETS website until like a week before my actual exam date. And here I want to mention a little pro tip. I think that it's better not to pressure yourself to choose an official test date very early on in your GRE studies. I think it's smarter to first understand the curriculum of the GRE, the contents you're going to be tested on, maybe do a few practice tests to understand where your level is currently at, and give yourself that flexibility to adjust your timeline accordingly. So let's say originally you thought that you would only need a month to score a 320 plus on the exam, but after doing a few practice questions, you realize that you need more time. So by giving yourself more flexibility and holding back on scheduling the test, you can adjust your study timeline accordingly and just not feel so pressured from the very, very start. So step two is actually building that study schedule. And here I'm going to share with you guys the study schedule that I use for my study process. And please keep in mind that everybody is different, so make sure to tweak your study schedule according to your own strengths and weaknesses. So for me, I decided that on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I would study quant, and on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I would study verbal. And I designed my schedule like this because I knew from the get-go that I needed more time to study quant because that is my weakness. I also found it helpful to alternate between studying verbal and quant every day because it made studying, I wouldn't say more fun, but less dull or boring for me. However, I do want to mention that I hit vocabulary every single day. So this is a pro tip here. I think vocabulary is something you need to be doing every single day, even if it's for 15 minutes when you're really, really busy, because with vocabulary, consistency is key. There is no shortcutting it. You have to take time to memorize words and review them for them to really sink in to your brain. I cannot tell you how many times I've memorized a word and literally two days later, I do not remember anything about that word. So make sure that when you're studying for the GRE, a test that emphasizes so much on vocabulary that you're touching those vocab cards every single day and memorizing them a lot. <laughs> on average, I think I spent around 30 minutes to an hour every single day just doing vocab. I would memorize around 20-ish new words daily and take the rest of that time to review the old words I had learned the day before and the day before that. 
and to add to my study schedule, I would do one practice test every single weekend. And I cannot stress this enough. I think it's so important to do several practice tests before the official exam. Practice tests are great for multiple reasons. First of all, they really allow you to simulate your testing experience. Also, it allows you to get a good estimate of the score that you're going to be scoring on the official exam. The score that I got on my GRE exam was very similar to the scores I had been getting on various mock tests. So I think that a practice exam is always a good way to understand where you currently are with your studies and where your weaknesses are so that you can improve on them. So here I want to quickly mention the amount of time I spent on my studies and please remember just to take this as a reference everyone has a different starting point so adjust your study time accordingly but for me in my first month of GRE studies I spent around two hours every day on my verbal or quant and like I mentioned before 30 minutes to an hour on my vocabulary and on the weekends I think doing a practice exam and then looking at what you got wrong fixing your mistakes it takes up like an entire afternoon because the GRE is quite a lengthy test that is how much time I spent on the first month and in the second month I definitely increased my study time I would spend around four hours every day on either verbal and quant but the same for vocab and practice tests so that is my entire study schedule for the two months so finally we're on to step three which is to actually schedule your exam date now after you have a target score an ideal test date and you're following through with your study plan you're nearing ready go on to the UTS website and just schedule that test I want to remind you guys right here that you're never going to feel a hundred percent completely ready to take on the exam but if you're someone who's already gone through all of your practice questions you're familiar with the content you've done multiple practice tests just take that step and get it over with because you can do it. So moving on, we have my study resources. So this time around, I did not pay for any sort of tutoring or private classes or online classes to study for the GRE. I studied completely on my own at home with the help of a few prep books. So I'm going to be recommending these books to you guys and hopefully they help you in your studies. So the first book I used for my GRE studies was GRE Prep by Magoosh. And I thought that it was a great book that allowed me to understand more about the GRE curriculum and what exactly I was going to be tested on. So if you're someone watching this video and you have like no idea where to start, I highly recommend that you start with Magoosh. It gives very, very simple and short um, explanations on all the quant concepts that you're going to see and the verbal question types, everything like that. It's definitely not comprehensive enough um, to get you a very, very high score on the GRE, at least in my opinion, but it's definitely a great book to help you kind of get your head into the game. While we're on this topic, I really want to emphasize it is so important to read up on the most basic quant concepts. Even if you're someone who excelled in math back in high school, I still think it's a good idea to review and just refresh yourself with the math basics. These quant concepts are like the tools that you have in your toolbox. And when you're solving a problem that GRE throws at you, you're going to want to use the correct tools to solve them. And if you have, let's say, a wrong understanding of a certain math concept, it will be impossible for you to get that question correct or solve that problem. So make sure you're reviewing on these basics before you get started on doing a ton of practice questions. Moving on, we have the five pounds of GRE practice problems. So this book is a great way for you to just get a ton of practice in. So after reading up on concepts through Magoosh, I like to use the five pound book to just practice, practice, and practice. The book is full of questions. It's seemingly endless. So I think you should definitely invest in this one 
if you're someone who wants to do a ton, a ton of practice to get yourself super prepared before the test. And now we're going to be talking about the books I have over here, four resources that I use the most while studying for the GRE. Starting off, we have these two practice question books published by ETS themselves. And I cannot stress this enough. If you're taking the test, please invest in both of these books. They are filled with questions that have actually appeared on the official GRE. So it's a great way to have a accurate understanding of what types of questions you might see um, on test day. So next, I want to talk a little bit about the GRE 500 vocabulary flashcards by Kaplan. And I cannot say enough good things about this deck. I think that it's a very solid starter pack to acing the GRE verbal. So this deck consists of 500 words that you often see on the GRE exam. And I can definitely vouch for that. I saw these words on various mock tests and even on my actual official GRE test. It's a very good pack to invest in if you're struggling with vocabulary studies. The next resource I want to mention is actually an app. So other than memorizing vocab words from a physical flashcard deck, I also made sure to download a flashcard app on my phone so that when I was commuting or just lying down scrolling on TikTok, I could click open the app and start memorizing even more vocab words. The app that I use is called Anki Pro and I'd like to thank Anki Pro for sponsoring this portion of today's video. So a few videos back, I talked a little bit about my personal study methods. And there I mentioned that I love studying through spaced repetition. So instead of sitting down for these very long, like eight hour study sessions at once, I like to review and refresh my material over time because I find that it helps me retain information much more effectively. And that is why I chose to memorize my GRE vocabulary with Anki Pro, a flashcard app that helps students learn without forgetting through their space repetition algorithm. I like to use Anki Pro by first going into their vast library and downloading some of the pre-made GRE decks. Then I'll give them my personal flair, personal touch with their advanced editing tools. So sometimes I'll highlight some of the crucial points or I'll add visuals when I feel like it helps strengthen my memory. For instance, there was this one word that I kept forgetting during my studies and it was the word yoke. So I went into my Anki Pro app and I put in this visual of two cows being binded by a yoke and you bet I never forgot that word again. Once my flashcards are ready, I'll go in and set the entire deck to spaced repetition algorithm. And here is where the magic really happens. Anki Pro will weigh how well you know each word and the words you find easy to remember will start appearing less, while the words you find difficult to remember will start appearing more. This extremely personalized setting really allowed me to memorize new words much faster. In the description box below, you can find Anki Pro's website and app, so make sure to check it out because it was truly a game changer for me. Thank you again to Anki Pro for supporting this channel. Moving on, the next resource I want to talk about is actually this very thick book from Kaplan Prep. It's the GRE Prep Plus. And if I were to only recommend one prep book from today's list, it would definitely be this one. This book not only explains all of the quant concepts very clearly, it also provides a ton of practice questions and six practice tests five of them being online. And the interface of the mock test is extremely similar to the one you're gonna see on the official exam. So I think it was a great way for me to familiarize myself with the whole look of my screen on official test day. The grades that I got for the Kaplan mock test were also extremely similar to the one that I got on official test day. So I would say overall, their mock tests are quite accurate in reflecting your level. So that's it for today's video. I hope that it gave you guys some inspiration on how to study for the GRE exam. And in the upcoming weeks, I will be posting even more GRE content. The next video I have lined up 
is my GRE at home experience. So if you're someone who's still deciding between taking the exam at the test center or at home, or if you're someone who's already committed to the at home experience, make sure to check out that video by subscribing to my channel. With that said, good luck on your GRE exam. I'm wishing you guys all the best and please stick around, like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed today's video. I will see you guys in the next one.